the busy NHL offseason has slowed down, and there aren't many big names left in the free agent or the trade markets. However, one major move that still hasn't happened, Columbus Blue Jackets forward Patrick Laine. Laine, the second overall pick in the 2016 draft, informed Columbus that he wanted a fresh start, but since he's been in the NHL player assistance program since January and teams can't contact him, trade talks have been difficult. On July 26th, Laine was cleared from the program, meaning teams can now reach out to discuss potential trades. Several teams have been linked to Laine, including the Anaheim Ducks, who have been one of the most recent reports due to their fit and their ability to absorb Laine's full $8.7 million contract. Ducks GM Pat Verbeek's goal heading into the offseason was to acquire a top six winger and a top four defenseman, both preferably right-handed. Well, we're, what we're looking to do and what's going to really happen are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> While Dumoulin isn't a top four defenseman, he will likely fill that role for the Ducks. So you could say that box is checked. His only other acquisition, Robbie Fabry, is far from being a top winger, meaning Verbeek has not fully achieved his goal as of now. Yes, he swung for the fences with Stamkos and Marchesso, perhaps a little bit too aggressively given the reported overpayment in years he was offering, which would have hurt the Ducks in the future. Thankfully, they didn't accept or we would be having a much bigger conversation about Verbeek. But that's a topic for another video. As it stands, Verbeek has limited options to achieve his goal. The remaining free agents aren't top six caliber, leaving a trade as his only viable option. Line, when healthy, is one of the best top six wingers available. So why would Line be a perfect fit for the Ducks? You know what the Ducks struggle with? Scoring goals. And you know what Line does when he's healthy? He scores goals. And here's Patrick Line. I'll take it from here around the head. There's Doc trying to get back in the play. Nice move on to Hahn. Again, while healthy, Line is more than a point per game player. His age also aligns perfectly with the Ducks timeline. He's a year younger than Troy Terry at 26. He would immediately slot into the top line. So what would a Liney trade even look like? He is currently a distressed asset. Liney hasn't played a full season since 2018, and his value has never been lower. And hopefully for his sake, it won't decline any further. He also hasn't scored 30 goals since 2018. But again, that's largely due to his health. He was on pace for 30 goals in all but one of those seasons. Did you see Gavrikov coming back? Door on on the goal that he scored off of your shot. Were you looking for a rebound there? Or were you trying to score with your no, shot? No, I don't. I, I don't shoot for rebounds. I, sh I shoot the score. The major concerns are his health and potential locker room issues. Regarding his health, Line has only played in about 65% of the games he was eligible for, whether due to injury or mental health concerns. Additionally, he just had shoulder surgery just to clean up. But whether he can return to some semblance of his Winnipeg level is the biggest concern for me. The locker room issues from his days in Winnipeg seem to be overblown. It seemed to be more from veterans being jealous or worried about losing their job because of a young player. All we know is that Stanley Cup champion coach Paul Maurice left because he couldn't fix the room. And Blake Wheeler, the main person who was the problem, was stripped of his captaincy and is no longer with the team. Since being traded to Columbus, there haven't been any reports of Line being a problem, at least that I can find. I talk to your teammates, they love you, you're a likable guy, you're funny. There's a lot to you, Patrick, so to see you get comfortable and, and show us who you are, uh, it's been fun to see that this year. Yeah, thank you. But if there are any issues, you know who would be the best person to mentor him? Someone who was also Finnish, was traded from Winnipeg, and has given him praise. Patrick Lyon, now a kid, three years into the league. Do you ever talk to him? Absolutely. And actually, I, I talked with his father too. And he, he contacted me at the time when he was struggling a little bit and, and asked some advice. Oh yeah, the Finnish flash himself, Timu Solani. Of course, if the locker room problems are truly a problem, you can't bring them in. Even if the cost was free. Locker room chemistry is what makes Stanley Cup champions. Columbus's GM has stated he wants a hockey trade when it comes to Line A, meaning he wants a roster player in return with no salary retention on Line A's contract. The Ducks are one of the few teams that can make that deal happen without involving a third team. Line A's value is hard to predict, but at the moment, it seems no trade on Line A is close, just like how Verbeek likes it. To be clear, the Ducks could beat just about anyone when it comes to an offer for Line A, and I think my trade idea is probably a bit of an overpay for his value, but the highest I would be willing to go would be a third-round pick and Lacombe. I like Lacombe, and I think more than most people. 
He got a bad rap playing with Fowler and playing on his off wing for a majority of the season. I think he has top four potential in the right situation. That said, we have so many deep prospects, and for me, he is at the bottom of the list for left-handed defensemen. So just like we did with Cutter, we would be trading away the depth of our deep prospects for a position we need. I would prefer not to give up Lacombe. I would instead rather do Strom in a third-round pick, but I don't know if Columbus would want that. They are a young team, just like us, so maybe they would actually see value in Strom. Again, I like Strom as a person, great dad energy, and well-liked in the locker room, but the hockey part is no bueno. So essentially, you would be trading Strom for someone with more potential, but take the risk he might not play in line A. But we do have enough depth now, not good depth forwards, but enough to cover if line A weren't able to play. You could also include Vitrano if Rabik can't see an extension working out, but Frankie wants to stay, so no Frank. Now, line A obviously has a 10-team no-trade clause. Maybe the Ducks are on that list, and this video is for nothing. Or maybe Line A is so eager to leave Columbus that he'd waive his no move clause if the Ducks are interested. I think it would be a mistake not to pursue this and go after Line A. But I'm literally just a girl who likes hockey. What do I know? Double Hockey Sticks just dropped a new collection for their birthday. So wish her a happy birthday by going to check out the new collection on her site. And while you're there, you might as well go check out the rest of the merch too because there's a lot of good stuff. And rumor has it, hopefully I can say this, but she's about to be in the Ducks team store an awful lot next year. So you know it's some good quality. This ad read was also part of my birthday present to her, so help me make it a good birthday gift by going to actually check out the site, or at least consider following her socials on Insta and Twitter. Go like some posts and help push her into the algorithm, because she is doing some big stuff to help change the culture of hockey. She has become one of my good friends this year, so happy birthday. With all the cap space the Ducks have, it would be a low-risk, high-reward trade. If it doesn't work out, Line A is off the books in two years, which lines up perfectly with many of the Ducks' prospects needing new contracts. If it does work, you've got a 30-40, potentially 50-goal scorer this team has been craving since Perry was in his prime. So should the Ducks trade for Line A? Yes or no? And if yes, what would be the trade? Thank you to our members. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and go Ducks! What about the yellow car? Why yellow? Well, Lamborghini is yellow, and Ferrari is red, and Skoda is green. So it's like every car has a particular color, and uh, that was kind of like my mindset when I, when I got it. And, um, it doesn't really blend in, but... You don't really blend in, though. No, I don't think so. So uh, it's just... It's just a problem that my car, car doesn't blend in either.